Hi guys and welcome back to my SimSig tutorials and in this one I want to talk about ARS which is automatic route setting and you'll notice that several of the simulations in SimSig the ones I can think of are Peterborough, Swindon, Liverpool Street uh, possibly some others use this thing called ARS uh, when you first use it you might kind of think ARS is a bit boring because effectively it automates an awful lot of the things that a signaler would normally have to do. But a, a automatic route setting in many ways is just an extension of the automation that signaling systems already have. Because in most cases why make a signaler set a route to timetable when a computer can do that much more quickly and easily without the signaler being too bothered. So it, it's kind of a natural thing. It exists in most of the new integrated control centers around the UK. And one of the principles really that you need to think of when you're trying to understand why certain things happen the way they do in ARS enabled um, control centers is that the system is there to help the signaler not to fight the signaler so you'll find that pretty much anything that signaler ever does manually which in any way confuses the automatic route setting system would disable that part of the ARS and you know which is supposed to happen because that's like saying look I'm doing something different let me do my stuff and then I can turn it back on afterwards so let's have a look at this. So I've, I've loaded up Peterborough. I am just about 1 p.m. in the simulation. As you can see, there are lots of services running on this simulation. This is the line out of King's Cross on the East Coast. So pretty much all of the trains to Leeds, to York, to Newcastle, to Edinburgh are all coming through here, as well as lots of local services that are kind of Peterborough to King's Cross services on the slow lines. Uh, a reasonable amount of freight. And then also, this is the junction here to Whittlesea that goes towards Cambridge. So that services to Ipswich and Norwich and stuff like that. You then have uh, this loop here to Ketton, which goes round towards basically Birmingham and that kind of direction. And then you have Grantham, which is the line kind of up north. So as you can see at the minute, I have uh, 17 trains in the area. Now, as a, a single signaler, there's very little chance that I would be able to regulate all of these services myself. So what ARS does is it says, well, let's route these things according to their timetable. So the first thing I just want to mention is the options, which is a funny place to start. But when you first load one of these simulations before you've used ARS, you'll find in this tab that this defaults to uh, a timetable summary, which looks like this. When you click a train, you get this comes up in the window and especially if you've only haven't got much space for the window it's you know not always very useful to me so the first thing i usually do is change that over to be the pop-up window which looks a little bit more like you're used to on the non-ars simulation so if you click on this now you get a pop-up now this is useful for two reasons it's useful because there's a lot more information on here but also it means that if I get a true ARS message, like if the system is telling me I need to route a train manually, then I can attach a sound to that and it's going to draw my attention to it. Uh, whereas with the pop up, I'm not getting the sound, as you have just noticed. And this kind of looks generally like the normal timetable. There's two extra things here to take note. This ARS status is uh, can be quite important because it can explain why things are not happening the way you might expect. So this service, for instance, 2P25 is scheduled to go to platform three, which is down here, and the train's sitting at a red signal. Why is the train sitting at a red signal? Well, if I click on that, it tells me that ARS is telling me that it wants to give priority to 1A24. Where is 1A24? It's there, it's going up. And it's, you know, probably going full whack at the minute, 1824, 125 miles an hour. So if we look at that one, we can see, although that's scheduled to stop here, it's also scheduled to arrive at 1302, which is before this one's due to arrive. So the system's making sure here that that one arrives uh, in order and that there's no danger of uh, this move into platform three blocking the approach of 1A24. Now, if you don't agree with that, you can override it, which I'll do in a second. 
but that's uh, kind of really all we need to talk about the options the this tip as well again it's what the ars system thinks the train is doing so it would be possible that the system thinks it's doing something that it isn't i mean in this case this train's stopping so i would say that this has been a little bit too conservative and could actually let this train into the platform which is why i'll override it in a minute so that's that uh, actually let's just um, run this a second if i unpause it if i set that into platform three the thing to be careful of of course is sometimes that will be going into the same platform as this so there might be a good reason why ars doesn't want to put this one in first because sometimes if this service is very early which does happen reasonably often on P um, peterborough is you don't want to put this in block the platform this is going to wait for 20 minutes before it leaves you're going to have to put that into a different platform and although this is a simulation you kind of want to treat it like real life it's one thing to put a train into platform five when it was due on platform four it's not a big deal to tell the passengers to cross over a platform but if it was platform three and you sent it to platform two then realistically you'd actually have to delay that train by probably 10 minutes to let people move over so this is another thing I want to show here. Let me just answer this a second. Answer that. Um, let's pause that a second. Uh, so if we look here again, 1M19, that's saying that it, well, it was saying a couple of minutes ago that it was giving priority to 1S24. Another thing to note here is what's happened is the ARS system is trying to regulate these and keep them in order and keep them roughly on time. So what it said is was 1S24 is due at Stoke Junction before 1M19 was due. Now, again, a couple of times in Peterborough, this can arrive a good few minutes early at Stoke Junction. The ARS system will not put that through automatically because it's trying to regulate time. So again, as a signaler, you might decide, actually, it takes a good, from, st from stationary, it takes a good 15 minutes for a service to get all the way to Stoke Junction. So even if that's early, we could still send it early. In real life, I'm sure there would be regulations about how, how much you should regulate trains and how much you should let them keep moving. But that noted is the driver of that train does not know that ARS is holding it for that reason. If the driver knows what's going on, they might know. But in case of the simulation, they're going to call you up and say, I'm waiting a red light, what's going on? And again, a signaler, you either think, oh, actually, I think I've got time to route you through manually or I'm going to tell you to wait, which is what I just did to that person there. Now, ARS sounds like a great system. And when you first start playing, you think this is boring. Well, am I just going to sit here all day and, um, you know, and just watch the trains automatically route themselves? Well, I guess in an ideal world, yes, you would. But it isn't fully automatic. What actually happens is, in general, if we look at a service, let's look at a fast service. There's one here. In general, the automatic route system will try and make sure there are at least two green signals in front of every train in other words that can stay at full speed it's not going to see a double yellow it's not going to start slowing down and, and start affecting time so it's always going to try and keep two greens obviously in some places like here where you've got a stretch of automatic signals that's not a problem because they'll all be green anyway if there aren't any services in front when you get to places like level crossings like here you'll notice that that level crossing route will automatically be set once that service gets to about here Obviously, level crossings take an amount of time before they're lowered and before that signal will clear. And then as it's going along, the ARS system's trying to kind of chase the, the routes going along this way, which is great. But the ARS system would generally only route to timetable. And this is kind of quite an important thing to know. So if you look here, this service 1007 is scheduled to run on the fast line all the way through to Stoke Junction and towards Grantham which is fine, platform four at Peterborough. Let's say, for instance, you had uh, a very slow running or even a broken down freight train, let's say here at Huntingdon. Uh, what's not going to happen is the ARS system will not automatically route the train onto the slow line to get around it, which is what a signaler would you know, often do in real life. So you've got to be very careful of that. Let's say you, your broken down train was actually here then the danger would be that that train would come all the way up to the next red light and then sit there and be stuck. So one of the things we'll look at in a second is how we kind of add some amount of override and control on that system. 
but um, but for now let's just know that it's going to try only and run to timetable. One of the things it will also try and do is it will try and regulate any conflicting moves. So if you look here, sometimes you'll get a 2K service to Spalding and it will need to go around the junction here and go down towards Spalding. While there might be another service like this class one coming down the line at 125 miles an hour. So again, ARS will primarily use the timetable to decide what to give priority to. Uh, if it detects that this train is running very late, then it's likely to put the train through. But again, as a signaler, you can't assume that. You still have to keep an eye on it and make sure that things are going as they're expected and that the ARS hasn't got something a bit wrong. Because obviously, by definition, an automatic system has got to be very careful. Whereas the signaler might go, oh, I know I can get that train through quickly before this one comes down. That's not going to happen with ARS. If this train's running any amount of time early, it's just going to keep it there. The driver is going to ring you up again if the if the route hasn't been set so just bear in mind that, that these things do actually happen in a normal day the other thing that it can do is any kind of basic uh, changing of the head code so if you look that 2p61 is actually the outgoing train so that service that i just signaled in was 2p57 or something what's actually happened is the ARS has automatically replaced the code with the outgoing service code which is again very helpful it can handle basic joins and divides as well so if a train comes into and divides it will interpose the front train and then when that one leaves it'll interpose the second one so that's all fine and if a train uh, joins as well it will get rid of the the joining train and leave the joined train alone so that's all great but what it cannot do is it cannot do that for complex joins. So depending on the simulation you're on, I don't think that happens on Peterborough. But if you have one that you sometimes do with en empty stock moves, especially when you've got, you know, six two car units all joined together and it's dividing that and then that one's moving and it's dividing again and doing all the rest of it. You'd have to keep an eye on that. But generally you can interpose in the same way as you can do on all of the other simulations as well so i can always overwrite that one if i want to for any kind of reason so that's fine the other thing is obviously you need to be how you need as a signaler you need to have a way of preventing ars uh, doing certain moves that you don't want it to do so let's imagine we have our broken down train here there's a couple of things that I can do. If you see these little pink dots, these pink dots are the control sub areas for this uh, control center. So obviously that's Huntingdon, uh, GB is whatever that stands for, uh, you know, Biggles Wade. So they tend to have the names of where they are, which is fine. So you can actually um, right click one of these and it goes gray, which means you've disabled the whole thing. Now what happens is any of the routes controlled in this area on the uh, downside, because notice there's a separate one for up, are now all disabled. So every single service that comes here will get as far as these signals and it will stop. So that's one way of, of kind of overriding it. That's obviously a, a bit of a sledgehammer, but that might be what you need, especially if you've got things like engineering possessions and stuff like that, which we'll look at in a second. The other thing you can do is if you right click and put a general reminder on a signal, then that disables that signal for ARS as well. So if there was a broken down train here, I would suggest the most likely thing to, or the best thing to do would be to put a reminder on both of those so that you would manually regulate who gets onto the slow line first. So obviously a slow train, if it's going to stop at Huntingdon, you'd probably put the class one through first and then follow it with the, the next one. So if we remove those, so that's uh, another way. And in the same way, if you key the points and those points are going the wrong way for the route, then uh, it won't actually route across it. I'm not actually sure what happens if you've keyed them this way. I'm not sure whether that route will, will prove or not. Um, but uh, anyway, that's a, certainly another way to regulate that as well. Uh, one another thing it won't do is in simulations where there are call on signals i don't think there are any at peterborough but in places like derby and stuff where you've got lots of double-ended long platforms and you need to call another train into an occupied platform those are not handled usually automatically by ars it will consider that a you know 
uh, conflicting movement and it won't do it so what that would mean is you would have to as a signaler you know right click uh, or sorry left click left click and actually send the, the call on signal yourself which again is fine you just need to know that and so the next thing I want to look at is um, is what happens when you override let's unpause this a second uh, oh let's just let's talk about this now what while the phone's ringing one of the things as well that the ARS cannot do is it won't route trains usually into or out of a non-track circuited area so for instance Neen carriage sidings is telling me it's got a train ready I can't answer the phone um, while it's paused so I'll unpause it in a second and we'll have a look at that uh, but even if I give this permission to enter let's answer that have a quick check that we're roughly on time platform five yes i'll allow it, let it do it now the ars will not route this train so i have to route that into platform five however once i've routed that in and the train arrives it will interpose the code correctly so let's just leave this running now what happens here is let's have a look at say this one here if i i'm going to wait for this route to come alive for one eo6 and then i'm going to cancel it down and we'll see what happens just to show you that should happen in a second come on uh, trains entered that's fine okay now I've got to be careful I need to cancel it fairly quickly because like there so okay so let's pause it a second notice first of all that New England is flashing so what's happened is two things first of all I have implicitly disabled the automatic routing because what I've basically said is well you set a route because you thought that was a good idea but I don't think it's a good idea so this is an example of where ARS won't fight you over that it'll just kind of go okay obviously something's happening that I don't know about so I'm going to disable it but because it was implicitly disabled rather than me clicking on it it flashes to draw my attention to the fact that I've now uh, disabled that that route and so what that means is now um, you know everything's up to me as a signaler the second thing it's done is if you notice the code of 1E06 has now gone pink. And if I click on it, it's telling me that this train is now a non-ARS train. In other words, the system will not route for this train automatically anymore until either I switch it back to uh, ARS, which I can do by right clicking and make it ARS again. Or if I manually route it out of the system somewhere, then obviously then that's that's all going to be OK. So you need to know that that these things disable that will not re-enable until I click on it again. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to re-enable that by clicking it. I'm going to right click and make it ARS and then immediately that's going to pick up where I started. So that's uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, OK, the thing to uh, another thing to note there is even though I re-enabled the ARS, notice that the system immediately took back over again. So let's imagine that I disabled that thinking, oh, I, I want it to wait here for a while because, you know, maybe there's a, a big block up in the, in the platforms and I need it to wait here to let a freight train out, for instance. So let's imagine I do what I just did and I cancel that, that route and New England disables. That goes pink and I kind of think, brilliant, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to leave it there for a bit. If I just re-enable stuff without actually, say, putting a reminder on that signal or whatever, then as you just saw, it's just going to pick straight back up and carry back on. So you've got to be dead careful because if I then go, oh, no, what have I done? And I right click and cancel it again. If 1E06 would see an adverse change in signal, then I'm going to lose points. He's going to stop. He's going to call me and say, why did the signal change color? I'll tell him to speak to his control, etc., etc. So notice that uh, that's that that's what happens another thing that happens is let me try it here actually is I am going so this is set uh, on the fast line now I know I probably shouldn't do this but um, let me, maybe we should try it with this one it's going to whittle C on the slow line I am going to try and route 6L91 onto the fast line even though it's not scheduled to do that just to make sure, first of all, that it's possible, which I think it is. So, and I'm just going to show you again, if you route something off its planned path, and I'll explain that in a minute, that it will also make the train non-ARS. But the reason I want to show you that, 
Okay. Now, as soon as I do that, uh, as soon as or as soon as that signal clears, I believe that should go pink like it just has, and that's going to say that is oh, it's a non-ARS train. Oh, hang on a sec. Let's make sure that nothing's kicking off. Nope. That's made a non-ARS train because this is scheduled to arrive on the slow line and exit the slow line via platform four towards Whittlesea, but I've put it on the fast line. Now, obviously, I wouldn't normally do that, but there aren't any other services coming, so I can live with that. The, what I want to show you is, A, what happens when you have a non-ARS train, because in Peterborough, for instance, you'll get about 10 services a day that will arrive in the area with pink numbers, and they will be non-ARS through the whole system. And it's a pain in the neck because none of the automatic routing works. Now, notice here that I didn't cancel down a route, so I haven't disabled any of these areas. They will attempt to auto route. But in this case, because this train is pink, it's going to say nope. Um, and it's not going to auto route anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep going here. That's going to carry on. When you have these non-ARS trains, because the whole centre is designed to be automatic, there are a lot of these kind of signals here that are cross-level crossings. They all have to be initiated manually by the signaller if they're not controlled by ARS. So if you've got a train here that's pink and can't, if you try and make it uh, ARS, it will say no because there's a, some kind of problem with the timetable. Then you're the person who has to go and click, click, oh, click, 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 and do that all the way through, which is annoying. Obviously, you could leave these set to auto, but as soon as you do that, you're going to screw up this uh, automatic route setting node because it needs to be able to send trains down the correct path. So our 6L91, I'm going to speed this up a bit just to make it go a bit quicker. 6L91 is going to come through here. It wants platform four, which you can have. I'm just going to double check 20 to 22. It's roughly on time, so that should be fine. Now, a thing that's really cool here is if I, let's get to here. Even though this is now on the wrong path, it should be on the slow line. If the system can work out how to get it back onto the right path, let me just check that's a platform five, which it is. If I right click this and make the train ARS, notice that the system has been able to work out how to get it from here back onto the right path. So it works out that, OK, the next point is actually platform four. I can get from where I am to platform four. So therefore, I'm going to make it ARS again. I'm going to be able to get get back to there and I'm going to carry on. What would happen? Imagine, I don't know, I put it somewhere completely wrong, like it was somehow told it to go down here. Then if I try to make it uh, ARS again, it's going to say, no, you can't do that because I can't get from here up to platform four and up to Whittlesea. Obviously, if I'd done that, I would have massively screwed up. Let's hang on a sec. 6L91. I'll just tell it to wait five minutes because it's got to wait for that train to leave. And then the system will route it back again. So let's pause it again a second. So non-ARS trains we've just looked at. So sometimes, like I say, they come into the area non-ARS. If they come in non-ARS, you can't make them ARS, which is annoying. So especially if you've got two at a time. I had one the other day where I'm going here and here. And, and we, you know, like most simulations, I don't want to set too much route because in the cases of these level crossings, if I set a route across it, the barriers are going to go down. I can't do that for 10 minutes while the train arrives. So I've got to keep kind of going backwards and forwards, set a route, yeah, we'll set a route across there, set a route, etc. If they're made uh, non-ARS because you set them off the correct path, like I just did with 6L91, then it will stay pink either until it gets back onto its path and you make it uh, ARS, or it will just stay pink until it leaves the area. So just because it, I route that into platform four, if that's non-ARS, it's not going to automatically go blue again. It's going to assume again that I've done that for a reason. So unless I tell it to go back to use automatic route setting, then that's not going to happen. So that's that. It, the other thing that you might need to do is when you get early trains, so I've mentioned this earlier, this happens quite a lot at Stoke Junction where there's a train on the slow line that arrives here maybe five minutes ahead of time, although it's timetabled to be there after maybe a service that might be here, a 1S service. Now, depending on what that is, if that's a, a class four train or lower, 
and the class one services back here usually i will just route that through because one of those services will be able to get moving and get away quickly enough if it's a class six or seven train think twice before setting it through especially if it's early because there's a good chance that uh, that's going to be too slow to get out of the class one train way what the ars will usually do if it has any kind of doubt is it will just hold the train and like we saw right at the start they will call you up eventually and say why am i at a red light and you might have to tell them to wait which is fine and let's have a quick look if you're when you first start and you you know most of you probably just use all the easy settings like i do to learn how the simulation is basically wired up you'll you won't have things like block lines and stuff like that but let's imagine for instance that the uh, down and up slow between tallington and stoke were out of use so that obviously would be very doable you've kind of got a number of options of what to do you could disable stoke and disable Tallington and then you could kind of have to route everything manually onto the fast line probably an easier way to do it bearing in mind that the fast line trains tend to get priority an easier way might be to leave Tallington um, enabled but set a reminder on that point and set a reminder on that point just to make sure that all of the trains arriving here are heading in the right direction so if then we got a 1s train pulling out we say right at tallington it's fast line so that's okay i could remove the reminder temporarily that will automatically route across and that will be fine but any trains that come in here i can make sure they go onto the fast line and but when it comes southbound because tallington uh, would be enabled then all of that routing would just happen automatically on the up so that might be helpful and then at stoke what i could do is i could just set that signal onto the fast and auto it set that signal there and auto that one stoke would disable as a result of that um actually should we just do that just to see what happens here if i set that as auto no, looks like I'd have to disable Stoke. So if I did it that way, then I could leave that on auto as well. I could leave that just saying, we're only using the fast line, we're not using the slow line. I could obviously uh, key the points as well. Let's just cancel these down before I cause any, any hassle. Uh, presumably, if I keyed those points, the same thing would happen. Uh, but the thing, I guess the important part is to understand the difference between uh the routing actually turning off and saying i'm not going to auto route it so the train's going to actually stop and trying to make it auto route in the right direction so there's kind of a balance there if i put a reminder on the train's going to stop there even if that's enabled if i key the points the train's going to stop there even though it's enabled whereas if i set the signals to auto and disable that then actually the trains are just going to move across and i'm not going to be holding anything up so you know just just remember those kinds of things it, you know it'll take a little while to get used to it but if you um you know if you play one of the scenarios where you've got the lines blocked then that should all be fine so i think we've looked at the can cancelling auto routes and stuff like that we saw that if you cancel an auto route then the actual sub area starts flashing to say right i'm not going to do my stuff anymore if you're if you know if you're going to be pressing all the buttons yourself and it's up to you to either re-enable it because you made a mistake or re-enable it after one train maybe you wanted to make one train on ARS maybe you re-enable it and then you just handle the train manually for a while so here we go train entering non-ARS down at this end so I'm going to have to set all of these now in this case first thing I've got to do I should have done that first is check fast line all the way which it usually is for the 1x trains Obviously, for any routes where I'm not going across a level crossing, sorry, I'm running really fast, aren't I? So I should probably slow that down before I kill myself. 1x25, wait, road signal at Stoke. Wait two minutes just for me to work out what's going on. Oh, it sent me um, sent me another, <laughs> another non-ARS train. So like I say, they sometimes send them in pairs, which is not helpful. This is fast line all the way, and this one isn't stopping at Peterborough. So I'm going to have to look at that. That's what happens when you uh, when you go too fast. I've got a, a train waiting there for a platform. It's probably waiting for platform four, I think. So that will be fine. Uh, oh, no, platform two. Okay, why is that waiting there? 1P30. Where's 1P30? And why does it care? Okay, so I shouldn't, shouldn't really, really be doing this while I'm videoing it, but 
Hey, this is this is all the fun. Uh, oh, it, that was one p thirty, wasn't it? Can I do this? And there's no overlap. That's why. Fine, that will that will happen by itself. So, um, I've got to kind of keep an eye on this now as I go forwards, which is fine. But as you notice here, like I say, I can set routes across places where there aren't level crossings because I already know that's the next train. It's on the fast line. This is where I've got to be a little bit careful. I've got, you know, as far as possible, I need to try and only set a route across there if this train is, is roughly two green lights away and, you know, do that all the way through here, which is really annoying. At the same time, like I say, they sometimes come in pairs. I've got to route that one down as well. So I won't bore you with that. The last thing to mention really with ARS is it is possible to have a special timing pattern for ARS trains. Obviously, the danger with uh, any kind of special train is if the ARS doesn't know how it's going on the, the time on the timetable, then it's not going to be able to route it. It's going to go pink and then you're going to have to do it manually. But let's imagine that, uh, I don't know, let's say we have a broken down train. Uh, I don't know, let's say at Huntingdon. And so let's say my fast trains are going to have to go um, onto the slow at Huntingdon back onto the fast that would be a, a nice one to have in, in real life it's more likely to be all the way down the slow line to St Neots and onto the fast line there but what whatever imagine that becomes a thing and then all of my fast trains pretty much a fast line all the way through so rather than me having to send it off the path which makes you go pink trying to set it ars again for everyone what i could do is i could create a special timing pattern in the timetable let's call it you know 1x00 or something and then i can let's show you how to do that what i'd have to do and again this is a, a special timing pattern that could exist on a real life system if you had a scenario that happens quite often, which is um, going to screw you over, you add a special timing pattern. So you add a new entry here. You tick the special timing pattern tick box here. And in the location list, as long as all the locations have 000, zero as their timing, uh, you can then set locations, platforms, lines, all the rest of it in the normal way. And then what you can do is you can then say to a train, right click ARS run to a special timing pattern. And as long as ARS can understand your locations and paths and platforms and all the rest of it, then the ARS can still take that train through. So what you could do is potentially, um, you know, attach that to a train that maybe always falls foul of another problem. You could attach it, send it via the slow line onto the fast line. That's a little bit advanced, but you just so that you know that it's that it is there so i would say that i mean in general i you know i tend to run this simulation relatively quickly at least two times sometimes three times the speed in the middle of the night i run it at eight times the speed because there's you know so much happens automatically but as soon as you get this kind of stuff you then realize why ars doesn't replace the signaler and why you know you've got to kind of understand how it works and like i say the annoying thing about this is because the whole setup the whole installation is designed for automatic route setting it makes it that much more laborious to set these uh, because none of these are designed to have um, auto barrier lowering they're all triggered off of routes and stuff so uh, that can be a bit of a pain in the neck but hey that's why you pay signalers so that is ars hopefully that won't frighten you away if you do want some fun you can either invent your own scenarios like you know invent a broken down train here and set point reminders and that kind of stuff try and deal with it or the timetables for most of these do have scenarios that you can select so you can select certain things like slow lines blocked or the fast lines blocked here um you know that kind of stuff platform out of use at peterborough that, that those sorts of things so if you do want it to be more interesting then you can do that but there's certainly enough interest when you're getting the, all of the freight trains trying to come out of here you'll get messages from ars telling you that let's say for instance the trains here that you need to set it manually into the isu or into peterborough yard so you still have to do some things manually and every now and then you get trains very early or very late that screws you up and, and you have to kind of really regulate trains properly so yep yeah, that's ars really like i say enjoy yourselves any questions or comments please chuck them below Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.